Uh, we do our surface plate. So we're going to create the job. So we'll just click the little job tab up there on the right hand side. We're going to add stock to all sides. We manual machine the Y axis to give us uh, something true to pick up off of. And we put the slots in manually. So we put zero on the Y. We'll add, you know, 100, 150 thou or whatever on the X, uh, 40 thou on the top. And we uh, we indicate it in the back of the uh, slab. That way, we knew the X, the X plus and minus were uh, were going to be square to it. And then after it was all said and done, I just dropped in the cutter manually and uh, ran it across that front piece. So we picked the top face for our X and then picked uh, corner number three down there to put our origin up there. So now we'll uh, create our face in operation. So you select face, we we'll pick, pick the face mill from our tool library that we already created. Then we'll uh, go in here and extend the pass out uh, past the stock so the cutter don't stop cutting and then lift off while it's still over the work. You, know, you want the cutter to clear the work before it lifts. Click the check mark. There you go. You can see the. Uh, See what it's doing. So now we'll go up here and grade and adapt this cycle. Again, we'll go into the library. Use our uh, three quarter inch tool. Set our uh, you know, our uh, depth of cut for each path. And uh, then our radial, optimal radial load, or, you know, basically your radial offset. So that uh, we've been using about 33% of the uh, cutter. So there you go. So to make uh, three radial passes and three uh, axial passes on each side, essentially. You know, for each axial level, it'll step in uh, three three steps. So that was three steps. It would do that for each uh, each uh, step. So now we'll uh, grab our drill operation. Go on our tool library, pick our spot drill. Hit select. Pick holes that we want to pick. So we'll pick our uh, first counter bore. Then we'll pick our first mirror, second mirror. Then we'll pick our first tap hole. Our pattern for our tap hole, so on and so forth. And it really cuts down on all the selections you got to make if you uh, draw it with pat using patterns and so. such. There you go, all our center drill holes are selected. Go to your heights tab. Pick your uh, and we're gonna pick that top face and then go in fifty thou or you know however deep you wanna center drill your work. 100,000, 200,000, whatever it is. So now we'll 
for another drill operation going here uh, new mill tool create a half inch drill and take our first counter bore mirror mirror Selection and then select the bottom surface and then just mine it from there. And then we'll do the pet drill cycle. You can adjust the, you know, your pet depth and all that good stuff in, in that last tab. So now we'll create another drill cycle, new mill tool. Now this one we gotta, you know, make it the uh, tap drill size because we're tapping these holes. And we're going to our selection. Then pick your first hole, your patterns, your mirrors, whatever it is that you got going on there. Cut all your selections down. You could go in and select each hole one by one by one. It'll be a long day, I reckon. And tip to the bottom, and drill tip to the bottom. That'll essentially uh, compensate for the tip because it, it knows how long the tip is on a half inch drill or a quarter inch drill or whatever. So it'll, in theory, make that tip all go all the way through the bottom. So we'll just. Uh, Duplicate what we had going on there. Since it's already got all our selections, go into our tool library, create a new mill tool, create a right hand tap. So the size of the tap is. Calculate the thread pitch. And calculate it right there in the uh, the box right there. It'll do the math for you. Just if you put in numbers anyway. Pick select. All your holes should already be picked. Put them in the last tab. Pick right hand tapping or left hand tapping or whatever you got going on. Tab tip through the bottom since you uh, duplicated the last one, it already had all that stuff there. So now we're going to do a pocket in operation on these uh, counter boards. We're just going to mill them out with our tool, with our mill tool, or end mill rather. Down. Setting up our depth of cuts. And step down. It's basically just going to drop right in the center of the uh, drill hole and swipe out the rest of that meat. And then once we see that it, it works, because I wasn't very confident in that selection at first, 
then we'll go back in and edit the operation, pick the rest of our holes. Since we know that it's boring that one hole, it'll bore the rest of the hole. In theory. Everything is a theory until the part's done. So then we'll go in here and simulate it. Okay, mill, drill, tap. Got a problem up there on the uh, left hand side. Seems like it didn't it didn't go to depth on our uh, any of our holes that we mirrored or patterned. So those are our three main holes right there. Which is why I don't like using the uh, I never use the dang can selection they give you down there where it says bottom of the hole. I always go from selection, flip the part over and pick it. This time I went ahead and tried my luck. This is why I don't like giving up that control I reckon. I like to tell it exactly where I want it to be at and that's where I want it to be. So now I'm going to pick the selection, give it a negative number. I'm not even going to use the tip through the bottom because again I'm just going to control it. Pick the selection, give it a negative number and that's how deep the dang thing is going to go. So I'll roll the part over make sure I see my little tool pass swirls coming out the bottom. Go back into every one of these operations do the exact same thing. Pick it, you know, change it, change the selection there that's already there. And go from my selection, pick the bottom, give it a negative Z, you know, below that depth, and call it a freaking day, right? It's the only problem with trying to make things too easy. Find out a lot of cam work. You tell it to auto select your work and it just freaking just does some stupid crap. Kind of, it just turns me off on all that auto select crap. Spend more time trying to fix the mistakes that we generated than it took to just come over here with HSM and just write a damn tool path. Of course, a lot of that's probably my own ignorance. I'm going to mess with it a little bit more here and see if I can't figure it out. So again, we're just doing that to every one of those tool paths. Change that selection. So now we're going to go in here and re-simulate it all since we've changed it. And see if it actually drills and taps all our holes like we want it to. Okay, so now I went through everything. So we'll 